So good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Morris Federation series of talks and workshops during lockdown. And today I have great pleasure in introducing Johnny Hazlitt, who is going to give us uh, a short tour of his book, Morris Dancers and Rose Queens, Volume 1. Uh, handing over to you, Johnny. Uh, thank you, Pauline. Welcome, everybody, and thanks for coming. I'm not used to doing this sort of thing, but I shall try and do my best. It's called Once Over Lightly because there's so many slides. I'll have to do them once over lightly. So we'll start with the, the advert, of course. Now then, the first photograph that I've got in volume one is the photograph of the Abra Morris Queen, 1880. And uh, apparently she had to stand for half an hour without moving to take this photograph, which I thought was funny. And the, the ancient dance itself was, uh, they had this Morris dancers ground in Abram, and it had to be danced on once every 20 years, I think, otherwise they'd lose it. And the first recording I, I've got is a, an 1880, but the one after that is a 1902. So there's been a bit of a gap, so, but, other people have been doing a lot of research with that, so that we'll skip that one. Right, now they also, which I didn't realize, was a very early Morris team was in Churchstown in Southport. The boy Morris dancers, children from Churchstown National Schools. Won't do a lot on that, but you can see 1887 to 1898 they were dancing. So we'll skip that one. Now then, I put this in for a laugh. The forthcoming faded Southport. With the old Morris dancing boy. Now, I mentioned the old Morris dancing because later on they have a little bit of a competition with Horitz, and that was in 1888 in Sackboy. Now, then, this is where it all starts the forthcoming May Festival in Leyland. People think that the actual dance came from Nuxford, but when you read, the, when you read between the lines, it is the Morris dancers which are about to introduce. The dance to the May Festival. Now, did they have the dance before they went? I think they, they actually made the dance up before they went to Nuxford because it'll, I'll tell you later when I go into it. Here we go. The Layla subscription price went followed by the Marshall in the rear for a party of score of Morris dancers along the route with Mr. Rose was a leader. Here we go. The Morris dancers under the leadership of Mr. the trainer, Mr. J. Lord, his local butcher, by the way, of Union Street, give an exhibition of their skill. They are, we do not hesitate to say, among the cleverest exponents of this class of dancing in existence. <coughs> Mr. Hadley Wally made an admiral leader of the juvenile dancers. Now then, there's a photograph of the of the dancers, Mr. Rose at the front. This is Mr. Rose, yeah, of course. There you go. Mr. John Rose, first leader of the Layla Morris dancers, local greengrocer. And part of the Masonic Lodge as well, I believe. Don't mind. <laughs> right, where were we? The Layla subscription, this is 18, this is 1898, 87 to 1899. Instead of doing them individually, I've just, most of them were saying. They had the dancers, Mr. John Lloyd, and they had the juvenile dancers. Different trainer this time, Miss Sumner, with the juvenile dancers. Ah, let's have a look at this one. Right. At the, at the head of the procession were two mighty police who cleared the way in style for the Leyland subscription brass band. The latter played suitable music for the Leyland Morris dancers and their quaint costumes of light blouses dark velveteen nickel bookers and white holes. The young men gaily tripped and whirled under, under the skillful leadership of Mr. William Hunter. That was in 1900. So we, I've gone over Leyland quite quickly. There we go, Leyland Morris dancer, Nick Silver. And there's another photograph of Mr. Hunter. Local policeman with Mr. Hunter. Right, now this is where it gets interesting. What happened was the first trolley 
Rose Festival in 1890, they wanted some Morris dancers, so they asked the dancers from Leyland to go over. Followed by the band of the Chorley Wing of the first volunteer battalion of the local loyal North Lancashire Regiment became a band of 17 Morris dancers who formed a picturesque addition to the procession. It is only proper to mention that their committee received considerable assistance from Leyland, Leyland friends, the engagement of the Morris dancers being one of its judicious investments. 1891, right. They decided to have their own Morris dancers and the trolley. The excellent band of the trolley rifle volunteers was followed by a body of Morris dancers, 29 in number, under the leadership of Mr. Harry Gent, who I very satisfactorily filled the post of trainer to them. They were attired in white blouses, velveteen breeches, pink hose, and they performed with much grace and precision. Now then, also that year, we had a, a juvenile procession. Over 50 children of the neighborhood formed in procession and a youthful McGinty's band was followed by a bevy of juvenile Morris dancers. Now McGinty's band was one of these gazoo bands. <coughs> they wore grotesque costumes. Now let's have a look here. Right, the third Rose Festival promoted in connection with St. George's Chorley Church Day and Sunday schools was held on Saturday last. Then came the action band of the Charlie Artillery Volunteers, succeeded by a numerous troop of Morris dancers who were led by Mr. Harry Jett. He's still there. Uh, here we go. So i to read it all, I suppose. Charlie Morris Dancers Ball, 1892. Charlie Morris Dancers and their friends held a tea party in Ball at Gordon House Restaurant. <clears throat> when the opportunity was taken to present the conductor, Mr. Harry Gent, with a handsome gold medal. Chancellor H.N. Whittle made the presentation and spoke in high praise of the manner in which Mr. Gent had trained the Morris dancers. He then proceeded, presented <coughs> to Mr. Grant, Mr. Gent, the gold medal, which bore the inscription. Presented to Mr. Gent by the Charlie Morris dancers, November the 12th, 1892, Mr. Gent acknowledged the gift and said he was quite willing to do in the past what he had done in the future, what he had done in the past. Then he pissed off the joint press and royal. But come on. Uh, here we go. So that's 1893, still in Chorley. The fourth annual Rose Festival in Summer Fade. A mountain marshal came next, followed by <coughs> the Chorley Auxiliary Band. Oh, excuse me. Uh, and a company of Morris dancers, 24 in number, under the leadership of a new leader, Mr. Jay Walker. Uh, just the rest of that. Charlie Morris dancers, ball. That's the wrong one. Sorry about that. Got it wrong. <coughs> oh, dear. Right, here we go. Charlie Rose Festival, 1894. For the fifth year in succession, a Rose Festival had been organized in connection with St. George's Sunday Schools, Charlie, and was duly celebrated on Saturday afternoon. First came the Mounted Cavaliers and the band of the Charlie Artillery Volunteers. We played selections of music with the Charlie Morris dancers, clad in white blouses and red caps and suitable nether attire. Mm. <coughs> That's most gracefully in the peculiar dance associated with the ancient custom of which they were the modern representatives. The Well Banks and Gregory's Brass Band came next and was followed by Preston Royal Morris dancers in their smart costumes and who danced in a manner that, in a manner that denoted skillful training. Mr. Harry Gent was the leader. Oh, no way. This is Charlie Rose Festival again, 1895. I've yeah, the Charlie Volunteer Artillery Band again played lively earth in which the Charlie Morris dancers went through their pretty movie. <laughs> the Well Bank Brass Band played the music for the juvenile Morris dancers, led by Mr. R. Cotton. The dancing was greatly admired by the spectators. <coughs> the Cold Cream Guards also played a scrutiny music for the Mock Morris dancers. Now, that's the first time that I heard of Mock Morris dancers. That's Mr. Strelli.
Oh, Charlie Rose Festival, 1896. In the van came the band of the Charlie Rifle Corps, which were followed by a troop of Morris dancers, 24 in number, who in their smart attire and graceful movements formed a very picturesque and attractive part of the pageant. Further on the procession followed the well banked band with the juvenile Morris dancers, who carried out their part with much excellence. <coughs> The senior Morris dancers were led by Mr. T. Ashton and the juvenile Morris dancers by Mr. J. Walker. Now, J. Walker, he was the leader of the, the senior team last year, so this changed. Ah. ah, here we go, 1896 to 1900, so they've had the same. One of the most unique and interesting possessions seen in Charlie for some time took place on Saturday afternoon in aid of the National Lifeboat Institution. The artillery band and the trolley St. George's Morris dancers were in the procession. Then the lifeboat was launched in the canal, which created a good deal of interest. I bet it did. Right, I we go towards my procession in Chorley. This is 1897. The torchlight procession was a unique in the history of Chorley as the Queen's record reign. Following the band of the Charlie Artillery Volunteers with a senior troop of St. George's Morris Dancers, who had already, already during the day fulfilled an engagement at Liverpool, who gyrated in a style peculiar to the ancient custom, which they represented with much grace. The well biked band was followed by St. George's Junior and Juvenile Morris Dancers, who in their wake performed in an excellent manner the picturesque dance. Now then, here we go. Same we're going over to Chorley, to, uh, from Chorley to, uh, to Harwich, 1891. The chairman and the Reverend W.J. W. Holgate were appointed to attend the procession to be held at Nuxford on May, May the 1st and to report the result of their, meet, <coughs> of their visit to the next meeting. So they also had a, a deputation going down the next group. Now, the crowding of the Harwich Rose Queen denounced. Sir, on Saturday evening at the outdoor meeting of the Salvation Army Corps, of the, uh, one of the speakers in the most blatant and bitter terms denounced the approaching Rose Queen demonstration as the work of the devil. <coughs> the managing committee might improve it. Oh, dear, sorry. The managing committee might improve the occasion if they would invite the local corps to join the procession. <laughs> I don't think they did. Uh, <coughs> here we go. The crowning of the Rose Queen at Horridge, 1891. Guess who? The Horridge band came next, and they were immediately followed by the Chorley Morris dancers, who went right merrily into their unique but charming, very positioned off the light, fantastic tone. Now, if you know, Leyland went to Chorley. So now Chorley has gone over to Horwich. I wonder what happened next. Here we go. Uh, it's a, ju a juvenile Rose Queen again. Now, this is interesting. <laughs> Excuse me a second. I'll have a little. A, a juvenile and the procession formed at 2.30, which was headed by the Horwich Juvenile Reed Band, followed by the Morris Dancers, boys and youths from nine to about 14 years. We append the names of the Morris Dancers as a reward to their efforts. Now, the one I'm interested in there is S. Fox. Now, further on, uh, Tommy Fox, who became a champion club dancer and a member of the the Hurwitz team. I wonder, was that his, his son or one of his relations? <coughs> ah, here we go. Advertisement. Second Hurwitz Rose Queen Festival. Object, providing uniform for local Morris dancers. So they decided to have their own Morris dancers. Now then, Hurwitz Rose Queen Festival again, 19, 1892. A general meeting was held on Wednesday at the Crown Hotel. Mr. Powell hoped there would be more care exercise in the reports before the festival was progressing. 
The Moorish countries were reported to be making great progress. Uh, here we go. This is the actual festival, 1892. The procession moved off in the following order. Marshall, Lancashire and Yorkshire band, then followed the Moorish dancers, whose graceful evolutions and beautiful costumes lent a charm to the scene. Another fact was brought clearly <coughs> to the fore that Horwich need not seek foreign aid in providing them with Morris dancers, for as these had papered down the streets in their spotless white shirts and other garments to match, they won the admiration of all who watched their graceful ev evolutions. And there you go, no more foreign Morris dancers in Horwich. So look at this. Oh, yes. Horace Rose Queen Festival, 1893. The holding of a Rose Queen Festival has become one of the principal events of the year <coughs> and was only formed three years ago. A Horace Old Band came next, followed by the Horace Morris dancers, and at intervals, gracefully danced through the streets. We see no reason why the one was discarded by the dancers. Now, it has been suggested that Mr. Harry Barlow should attend to this, as the wand would have added greatly to the effect. Hmm, threw the wands away. Here we go to the editor. Sir, with reference to your report in last week's issue regarding the use of the wand by the Morris dancers, I cannot see the necessity of the same. As the dance gone through by the Horwich Morris dancers would render the wand useless, the ropes carried by the Horwich Morris dancers are the proper thing to use, as in the real Morris dance, the exertions of the hands are equal to the feet. 30 years ago in the country Morris dance, the dancers used the blue and white plaid market handkerchief, twisted and tied in a knot. <coughs> I consider the effect produced by the ropes are pretty as those by the wand. To use the wand is not the Morris dance. Thomas Barlow, there you go. So, here we go again, honours for the Horwich Morris dancers. The Horwich Morris dancers journeyed on Saturday to Rochdale where they, where they competed at the Infirmary Gala and won the prize of two pound two shillings. The Rochdale Observer referring to the competition said, <coughs> another new feature is a variety program was it? a competition for Morris dancing. Two troops competed. The first appeared came from Horwich and the judges had no difficulty in deciding to award them first prize. Horwich old band supplies the music to which they dance. Their get up consisted of navy blue and red sashes and girdles, clogs with ivory buttons. Each of the 25 members of the company carried <coughs> Plied it ribbon in his hands and swung and twisted it about when dancing. Mr. Harry Barlow acted as leader. The other contingent, contingent came from Oldham. There you go, the Morris. Horace Morris at Fleetwood. Ah, this troop of Morris dancers visited Fleetwood on day and performed in front of the Crown Hotel before a large crowd and met with a hearty reception. They afterwards attended the sports for which they had been engaged and gave two performances and at the conclusion of the same were loudly cheered. The dancers wore their medals. A few gentlemen of Harwich having made up the prize of two guineas so to enable the medals to be purchased. The dancers performed on the difficulties as they had to dance on the grass. Now I know all about that. <laughs> hey. Right, here we go. Horwich, 1894. Horwich Morris dancers are opening out to fame. And if they will only exercise due care, they will certainly stand more to the fore. They hold the dignified name of prize Morris dancers. I have admired them. There is such a thing as being intoxicated with success. I know a little vanity is dangerous to be honoured by a lord to be the centre attraction of one's own town and elsewhere is a great honour. Mr. Parrington well deserves all the praise that has been heaped upon him. Mr. Parrington 
took over from the Balu as leader. Uh, first Rose Queen Festival, 1994. The fourth annual Rose Queen Festival was held on Saturday. The weather was being gloriously fine. The Morris dancers who bent themselves willing and successfully to their task were really picturesque in their beautiful costumes, graceful evolutions, and desire to sacrifice self in order to please the public. <coughs> Mr. Parrington, the rebel leader, is to be complimented. Come on. Ah, this is a laugh. There we go. The fifth annual Rose Queen Festival was held on Saturday last. Brilliant weather prevailing throughout. The modest dancers who on this occasion were well represented by a senior and junior set. And in giving our warm <coughs> compliments to the junior set, we made their debut. And to the leader, Mr. Parrington, we distract nothing from the well-known, well-worn honors that surrounded the senior troop, for certainly combined they were the very fe feast of the procession. Mr. Woodworth led the senior troop. So they, Mr. Parrington and Mr. Woodward changed sides again. But, ah, uh, Morris Junior Morris, Morris Junior Morris Dancer, 1895. These dancers visited Rutsdale on Saturday <coughs> and took part in the Morris dancing competition. They were awarded the first prize, three pounds. The Harlech Prize Medal Morris dancers, who also competed, accorded the second prize. And there's a little thing here, Horridge and not Huggets. The junior Morris dancers got the first prize for dancing, and not because they had the nicest dress. Horridge Junior Morris dancers, first prize. Horridge Pride Medal Morris dancers, second prize. Have the big lads sold up yet? I wonder if the secretary has sent that telegram to the Brian Kai Hotel yet. He told the landlord he would wire as soon as he got the first prize. But it didn't come off. Well done, the juniors. Hmm. Here we go. Now this is uh, 1896. The Horace Junior Morris dancers made their first public appearance on Saturday and gave two performances in the streets. They looked smart in their ruby trousers, white shirts, and sashes of yellow and blue, and fancy coloured rosettes. <coughs> For the first time, the dancers discarded their boots and wore clogs, attached to which were bells. The dancer numbered 16 in charge was the leader, Mr. Alex Morris. Mr. Thomas Whitehead is the secretary. Now that's interesting, because there's a photograph here, this one. Uh, yes, Robert Eden. Now was he one of the junior Morris dancers who discarded his boots for clogs? Don't know, but uh, seems to me that he was. Might be wrong. Don't know for other people to find out. And this is the team we're talking about. And if you look, it's about the tall bar at the back. You can see the it's definitely the tall bar at Harbridge. And the 16 dancers. Mr. Alexander Morris, as you were called. Yeah. Here we go, Horace Morris Dancers, 1896. On Saturday afternoon, the Morris Dancers, under leadership of Mr. Alexander Morris, went. <laughs> Pardon me. Oh. Under the leadership of Mr. Alexander Morris, were out for the dance. They started from the tour bar in about half past two o'clock, having first been photographed in a group in the inn yard by Mr. Horace Hutchinson, an amateur photographer. I wonder is them, um, is that the photograph too? Interesting. Darwin, the, same, the fancy cyclist, fancy ball, yes. And that happened for two years on the trot. The scene was brought in interesting and dancers seemed to thoroughly enjoy themselves. The Horace Morris dancers were present and gave an exhibition of their skill. Kirkham Club Day, 1896. The annual Club Day demonstration took part at Kirkham on Thursday. Harry Junior Pride Medal Morris dancers were like their title, immense, and they performed to the strains of the Freckleton Band, which was gracefully executed and highly appreciated. Ah, 
<coughs> oh dear, pardon me. Advertisement at Lincoln, the gala and brass band contest at Delbury and the Horridge Prize medal, Morris dancers, 18 in number, winners of first prize at the Rotsdale contest. Very good. See, wonder what you do on a train, isn't it? Hmm. Right, that's the end of Horridge, I think. Right, 1891 to 1896, Iston and Makerfield May Queen Festival. Mr. John Hilton had meanwhile under his car a number of boy Morris dancers. The Morris dancers were in white sailor hats and blouses with cord, uh, uh, yes, cordon, it? and blue trousers were certainly one of the principal features in the procession. Now, the, apart from Leyland in 1890, the little village just outside called Farrington, and they stimulated by the success attending the May Festival at Leyland, the villagers at Farrington resolved to organize a fete and similar lines for themselves. The procession was formed in which 400 children took part, but Mr. H. Blackhurst trained the Morris dances, and that went on until 1893. The crowning of the Rose Queen in Adlington, juvenile Morris dances were led by Mr. J. Mitchell. That went on from 1891 to 1895. <coughs> ah, here we go. The Morris dances showed a new departure and though perhaps some may argue in favour of the masculine gender alone, that the most capulous would scarcely have dared to ad adversely criticise the display on Saturday. Leader of the dancers was Master J. Mitchell. Obviously, they got a mixed team there, little boys and girls. They were going to couple now. 1891, the Morris dancers and the commoners band led the procession and were exceedingly well presented. 1893, the procession started from the National School, headed by the Coppel Brass Band. Then came the Morris Dancers, trained by Mr. Busby of Chorley. The Ginty's Band played sweet music for the Morris Dancers, conducted by Mr. Collier. <coughs> now, um, I think this was Preston Royal, Coppel Rose Queen, 1894. On Saturday afternoon, the village of Copper presented to their parents, the occasion being a celebration of the second Rose Festival, headed by the Copper Brass Band and a company of Morris dancers under the leadership of Mr. Gent of Trolley. Yes, I, I think he, uh, he probably paid them a visit with his team. Don't know. There we go. Copper Rose Queen, 1895. High festival was held in the village of Koppel on Saturday last, on the occasion of the annual ceremony of crowning the Rose Queen. Koppel Brass Band came next, and to the music played the troupe of Morris dancers, who followed under Mr. William Rigby, went through the rhythmic movements <coughs> peculiar to the old English rebels. The mock Morris dancers again followed McGinty's prize band, whose novel music evoked much merriment. In the top of Morris Dancer. Here we are, probably one of your photographs. Now then, here we've got a Rose Queen Festival at Standish, 1894. Following the example of neighboring townships, a Rose Queen Festival had been organized. Of course, a procession through the village and enjoyment to a field. Following the Copper Brass Band were a couple of Morris Dancers. The, fully element, the funny element of the procession was provided by Mr. McGinty's band and his Morris dancers, <coughs> whose grotesque costumes alone were sufficient to make anyone laugh. Hmm. Ah, here we go. Finley Green. Right, so we had, we had Chorley going to Harwich, and I, the Chorley Morris dancers, actually visited Finley Green in 1891. A very attractive feature in the program was the appearance of the Charlie Morris dancers. <coughs> Gave quite an entertainment to the public by their dancing in the procession. And that was in August, November. We have in the Green Morris dancers, a number of young men who have formed themselves into a class of Morris dancers. 
in the village held their first tea meeting and dance on Saturday last. And the headquarters is sworn in, Mr. Welsh accompanying on the violin. <coughs> oh dear. Uh, Hindley Green Rose Queen, Harvest Festival 1892, 1893. Of course, Hindley Green Morris dances were a source of attraction and their dancing along the route was much enjoyed. Mr. Harry Taylor was the trainer of the dancers. Hmm, well, uh, <coughs> pardon me, sorry about that. The Morris dancers are in for a fair lot of popularity just at the present, and of course they deserve it. They are a lot of fat calved young men, and with their strat shirts, knee breeches, pink stockings, and brogues, and something resembling strap toffee sticks when they move about they present a very nice appearance in fact they look like a lot of marionette toffee sticks manipulated by a string mm, charming. in the green morris i both pelted. i nearly got into hot water for calling my friends the henley green morris dancers the toffee stick marionette brigade i apologize humbly beg to withdraw the above name and in conclusion to say that if their lackings developed for certain beverages, which they seem to have taken during the hot weather, I shall have to call them the Ale Can Brigade. Mm. <coughs> I like Morris dancers, but I don't like to see so many young men and sometimes young women getting into habits which are far too prevalent in this district already. No sooner is there reform the sooner there is some reform in the doings, the better. Hmm, there you go. Drunken Morris dances. What's new? Ah, oh, here we go. Henley Green again. The annual tea party and ball was held at the Spinner's Arms on Saturday. And after tea, dancing was indulged in. Mr. Robert Welsh's band accompanying Mr. Harry Taylor was presented with a handsome stagnet and containing the following inscription. Presented to Mr. Harry Taylor, MC, by the Henley Green Morris dancers as a token of respect. Mr. Taylor has been the leader since the dancers commenced. And another stagnant was presented to Robert Welsh, who also been, has been the, the company. Hey, hi. The village of Henley Green was in. The roads were closed by streamers and flags. Oh, and, I might have to move my car out. Oh. Like, Sorry, someone say something. Carry on, Johnny. Sorry, it's just it's interruption. All right. It's alright. It's alright. Cough on your other side now. <clears throat> Henley Green Rose Green Festival, 1894. The village of Henley Green was in fete, and the roads were closed by streamers, flags, and banners being displayed. Into procession came Henley Green Social Club brass band, followed by the Henley Green Morris dancers, captained by Mr. Harry Taylor. And attired in white shirts, dark shirts, and sashes. The Maypole and Garland dancers were also trained by Mr. Harry Taylor. Garland dancers. Here we go. In the Green Rose Green Festival from 1895 to 1897, the procession started from the cricket field, consisting of over 400 children, representative of various character, characters among which were garland dancers who were trained by Mr. Harry Taylor. So I think he's got rid of his men, the man, and, and started with little girl with garland dancing. Hmm. Oh, not quite. Crowning of the May Queen at Goulburn. They're in Goulburn now. Uh, grand procession. Also a special dance by the Henley Green Morris dancers. That was in 1892. So if we go back to that, that was in 1895, 1897, when the Garland dancers appeared. Right, the Mary Queen of Goulburn, 1892, 1893. The principal addition to this year's turnout was the appearance of the Henley Green Morris dancers. This is interesting. The very previous programs by going through the quaint dance as they moved along the streets. Well, in the past, mostly the Morris dancers actually danced at intervals. 
And it, uh, yeah, it's interesting. They're probably the first ones to start to start to dance all the way. <coughs> I don't know. Interesting. The novelty proved very acceptable and took it exceedingly well with the public. After the presentations of Henry Green Morris, Henry Green Morris dancers give a pleasing display in which they introduce several dances, which though good were just a trifle too long. <laughs> Hmm. All right, we've gone back to Goldborn, 1894 to 1899. The annual May Queen for festivities for 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 <laughs> to play the Goldman last Saturday. The pretty maple dance was executed. The floral dancers, conductors, Miss Bullock and Miss Hitchin, uh, gave a graceful exhibition, after which the boards were occupied by Mr. Jackson's Upo Bow Troop. Now, the Upo Bow Troop, Mr. Jackson's, actually became the Eight Lancashire Lads. <coughs> and uh, someone called uh, Charlie Chaplin actually danced with them when he when was 12. Anyway, they, 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 they gained additional fame for themselves and their painstaking conducting. The next feature was the da Gypsy Dance by 12 highly trained girls. It was evident that Mr. Dayton had spared no pains in the training of the girls. Yes, most, <coughs> most of these festivals, Rose Queen, and what have you, they all had uh, maypole dancing, uh, Scots dancing, Irish dancing, you name it, all sorts of dancing. It wasn't only Morris. Ah. Here we go. Depressed in 1892. I like this bit. A number of gentlemen met at the Stanley Arms Hotel on Wednesday evening to consider the desirability of holding a festival on similar lines to those which proved so successful at Leyland Chorley and elsewhere. <coughs> Sugar. Mr. Rose, the leader of the Morris dancers at Leyland, has written stating that they would be pleased to attend it and dance at Lit Preston Festival, providing the committee would pay for expenses. Mr. T. Wally, the secretary of the Leyland May Festival, had not replied to a request to lend them the use of a maypole. At a meeting of the Rose Queen Festival, uh, the Rose Festival Committee was, last, was held last night evening at the Stanley Arms Hotel. The secretary, Mr. Horton, reported that he had interviewed the Leyland authorities <coughs> in reference to the Maypole and Morris dancers. <laughs> but their researching was not encouraging. The Leyland people seemed to look upon the procession as antagonistic to theirs. They interviewed the Jolly Committee. They promised that their Morris dancers, 29 in number, and their soldiers and sailors would attend. You not have an eye made for Preston Rose Festival, 1892. There will no doubt be a great many visitors to the town to see the sub <coughs> subsequent pageant. <coughs> the, Rose, the Rose Festival will, we believe, be a magnificent display. And the Leyland and Charlie Morris dancers will also take part. The site will probably be a unique one in the history of the borough. Preston Rose Festival, 1892. First came the Marshal, it was followed by the Mounted Police and the Leyland Subscription Prize Band. Then came the Leyland Morris Dancers, who at various intervals were loudly applauded for their excellent performance. The Charlie Morris Dancers, who in the opinion of many, excelled their Leyland friends, gave an excellent performance for which they were enthusiastically cheered. Mr. Rose led the Leyland Morris dancers. Mr. H. Gent led the Trolley Morris dancers. Preston Rose Festival, 1892. The Morris dancers were loudly applauded as they progressed through the streets on the 25th, and they proved to be one of the most attractive features of the procession. There is a rumor that effects are being made, or will shortly be made, to establish a troop of these dancers in Preston. Advertisements. <coughs> oh, wanted. All persons who wish to join the Preston Morris dancers 
to apply manly dancing classes. Preston Morris dancers, dancing master Mr. J. Spencer, meeting of the above class will be held on Wednesday next at the Moore Park Dancing Academy. So we're off to a, ah, advertisement. Preston Royal Morris dancers, a vacancies for a number of respectable young men. Apply York Hotel, Church Street. P.S. No boys need apply. <laughs> Advertisement to Preston Royal Morris dancers wish to inform the public that they have no connection with any dancing room class or with any other Morris dancers that have appeared in public. Honorary Secretary Yates Parker and Modeling Bank, Preston. <laughs> Advertisement. Now, this is the first advert with the, uh, the Preston Lifeboat Saturday with the actual Preston Morris dancers on. Lifeboat Saturday, Preston, 1892. The first demonstration in Preston in connection with the Royal National Lifeboat Institute took place on Saturday. The Preston Morris dancers who followed the band made their first public appearance and under the direction of Mr. J. Spencer made a very favorable impression. Advertisement. Preston Morris dancers who took part in the Lifeboat Saturday procession beg to inform the public that they are in no way connected with the organization which styles itself Preston Royal Morris Dancers. Subscription for the Preston Morris Dancers should be made forwarded to Mr. Div Mr. Livingstone. <laughs> I'll get now I like this one. This is good. <coughs> Advertisement, amalgamated friendly society's ball. The society will be held in the public hall Preston on Monday, October the 17th, under the distinguished patronage of the Preston Royal Morris Dancers will open the ball in Spanish costume under the conductorship of Mr. Harry Gent. Surely. So there you go. Spanish bullfighters. Who would have thought? Nah, nah, here we go. Preston Rose Festival, 1893. There were Morris dancers who enlivened the march by their graceful gyrations. And we have, especially on our mind's eye, the little lads and lasses, the pressing juvenile Morris dancers, so, so nicely attired, and who must have undergone much special training. They were under the leadership of Mr. J. Spencer Preston. A Morris dance by the Preston Royal Morris dancers was most enthusiastically cheered for having helped, for having helped to entertain those present. Uh, Mr. Gent of Trolley is the leader. The program was brought to a close by a Morris dance by the Preston Morris dancers, which were cleverly performed. Preston Lifeboat Saturday 1893. Hmm. Oh, Lifeboat Saturday in Preston is met with such praiseworthy response from the inhabitants of the town that it will be and all probably be, be an annual celebration. The boat was drawn by six powerful horses and the crew were very loudly cheered. Following came the members of the Preston Dominance Corps, first volunteer battalion of Lancashire, now Loyal North Lancashire Regiment, flute, flute and drum band, Preston Morris dancers, sailors in ball, Trinity flute and drum band, Preston Juvenile Morris dancers, Grace Darling, Catherine Nelson, St. Peter's flute and drum band, and Preston Royal Morris dancers. Oh, and there you go. Preston Royal Morris dancers. Yes, yeah, when so I started this this research, why were they called Royal? And I've decided they were called Royal because they dance in front of the Rose Queen. Nothing else. Like all these, most of these other things were Royal in their. Uh, right, my day in Preston, the trade procession. 1894 it was it was almost ideal May Day on it was all it was almost ideal May Day on Tuesday. Although there was a northern chill and the, uh, the sunshine fell broadly over all the celebrants of the old time festival, and thereafter were soon in evidence, preceded by a drum and fife band, 
dress in juvenile Morris dentures. Very pretty, they looked in their light dresses of white. The boys were in red and the girls blue caps. Hmm. Preston St. Mary's and Morris dancers. This is the first mention of actually a found one. In St. Helens, would you believe? The Grand Bazaar is being held in aid of the re roofing of the Holy Cross churches in St. Helens, in which the Reverend Father Fanning, <coughs> SGI formerly of St. Ignatius Preston, is the rector. Among many attractive features, one which will concern his Preston friends particularly is that the St. Ignatius Morris dancers, headed by the band, band of the Boys Refuge, but Liverpool and a first class concert party will be present on Wednesday and Saturday. Now then, the Boys Refuge, the, the Father, Father Nugent started a, a, a Morris team up and, uh, and they've also got the same type of um, uniform as the Spanish bullfighting. I wonder was there, yeah, I wonder was there a, a connection there? I think there might've been. Blackburn's Lightboat Day. Mm. The claims of the Lightbone Institution have been urged with great force and success in many centres, but seldom with so much persist persistence, I think that's the word, and passion, plodding, hey, plodding just in Blackburn. The Preston Morris dances were watched with the utmost interest. The stylish and graceful movements as they performed their own particular dance, peculiar dance, being one of the bright features of the whole show. I don't know, what are we going to? Oh, yeah, here we go. Lightboard Saturday, 1898, Blackburn. That Saturday was Lightboard Saturday at Blackburn. The fife and drum band of the 1st FB East Lancashire Regiment were followed by the Spencer Juvenile Morris Nansen's Preston in white dresses ornamented with red bows treated the crowd with some of their dancers, the Garland Fife and Drum Band, and the old original Henley Green Morris dancers were also in the procession. <coughs> and I thought the Henley Green Morris dancers had been disbanded, but obviously not. It might have been a one off, I don't know. <laughs> oh. Preston Rose Festival, 1894. The Preston Rose Festival which has now become an annual event on August Bank Holiday, was celebrated yesterday. The appearance of Mr. J. Spencer's Juvenile Morris Dancers, composed of young children who went through the various figures and movements of the dance with grace, which was really bewitching. Also in the procession was the St. Warburg's Juvenile Morris Dancers, first mention of St. Warburg's, and the Preston Royal Morris Dancers, who performed the each each lot being greeted with great applause, both on the road and on the football ground. There we go. Ta -da. And there's the Preston Juvenile Morris Dancers. Yeah, there we go. Ah, here we go. Ah, this is, forgive me for reading all this. I hope I get it right. Presentation to the Preston Morris Dancers. On Tuesday evening, trustees and officers, together with a number of friends at a sawari in the room in Delaware Street, that's Blackburn, dancing was engaged in and for about a couple of hours. And in the interval, Mr. Ainsworth, a trustee, took the opportunity of stating why they were met together. It appeared that the Preston Morris dancers had for some time given the services and aid of the Garland Band of Blackburn. And the latter nod to present each dancer with a silver medal, upon which was a suitable inscription. Mr. Radcliffe made the presentation. Mr. Foxcraft, secretary of the Garland Band, also spoke. Mr. Radcliffe next, in, uh, on behalf of the Morris dancers, presented a marble timepiece to the secretary, Mr. Shaw, who was retiring from his position. Mr. Shaw suitably acknowledged the gift and the remainder of the evening was spent in singing and dancing. So everyone wanted to know where those medals came from. Now, there you go, now we know. And this was presented to H. Billington, Mr. Billington, D. Billington, I think he said. Yeah. And he went on 
to live in Crewe, and I think he started a couple of teams up in Crewe, Crewe Royal, I think. I don't know, other people know more about that than I do, but that, those are photographs of the medals. Yeah, very good. Here we go again. Black boats that are impressed in 1895-1898. The clear road was kept by the mounted police, and at intervals, a band of the 1st Volunteer Battalion LNL Regiment played the music for the Preston Morris dancers, who were led by Mr. J. Spencer. The Holy Trinity Flute and Drum Band and the St. Ignatius Morris dancers terminated a splendid, spectacular display and afforded the utmost delight to thousands of onlookers. <coughs> ah, that's another one, controversial one, this one. The Charter Dead Cone, 1895. A great demonstration was held on Saturday at Cone in honor of the grant of a charter in the town. A troop of Morris dancers from Preston were in the procession. Now, a few years later, I actually got a photograph of, um, of Preston Morris dancers had said at the Charter Dead Cone. But uh, unfortunately, uh, a few people uh, don't really accept that fact. They, don't, they, they think it's a, of a Cone Royal. That photograph, but it, it was in 1895. It was obviously, as far as I'm concerned, it was Preston. So, you know, man. Children's Garland by Social Time. Here we go. I like this bit. Let us hope that this social will be very. This social was happened every week, by the way, with the Children's Garland. <coughs> kind of a temperance thing, I think. Let us hope that this social will be very enjoyable. Everything has been done to make it a pleasant evening. I have been spending the weekend in Preston, staying with Captain Spencer's, and I enjoyed myself. I enjoyed myself very much. The Morris dancers are bringing over their new banner, which has a picture of a Morris dancer on it, and it cost over eighty pounds, and it looks magnificent. That was William Hargreaves, the secretary. Guess what? The social in the Garland band and the Morris dancer they came out to see. A large crowd of people assembled in the station. On Station Road last Saturday to watch the Preston Morris dancer in the Garland Band start off for a for emulation around the town. The dancers looked very smart in their new shirts and hats, but they had the misfortune to leave their big banner on the train. <laughs> a pleasant and unexpected feature of the gathering was a presentation by Mr. Shaw on behalf of the committee of the Preston Morris dancers of a gold centre medal to Mr. H. Hargraves our capable secretary has a mark of appreciation for the services he has from time to time rendered them. So, uh, Lancaster, royal visit. Now then, this is, this is interesting as well. After a lapse of nearly half a century, time under Lancaster was on Tuesday revisited by royalty. The Highness is the Duke and Duchess of York coming to open the new infirmary. One of the most entertaining features of the festivities was the procession of the local cycle clubs. Following the band of the 1st VR Royal Lancaster Regiment came the Preston Morris dancers in their picturesque costumes, gaily bedecked with ribbons, keeping time with the music and the pretty evolutions of the dance. Right. <coughs> oh. Preston Morris Dancer to Glasgow, 1896. On Saturday, the Preston Morris Dancers attended Glasgow for the purpose of leading the Glasgow Lapo procession. This is the first instance of Morris Dancers visiting Scotland, and it is pleasing to note that they were enthusiastically received. After the procession, they were addressed at the Alexander Hotel by Mr. Kearney, Chairman of the Executive Committee, who on behalf of the Executive, thank them for the kindness and coming to assist them. There you go. Now, sitting there is annual field day, Preston, 1896. The procession started from the school, schools about two o'clock, headed by St. Ignatius Morris dancers, led by Mr. T. Banks, their instructor, and headed by Mr. Barton's brass band. There we go. Harry Singleton. You see the bullfighting uniform again. Kirkham Club Day, 1895. The annual Club Day Festival was held at Kirkham yesterday. 
The procession included the Preston Juvenile Morris Dancers and Fleetwood Chronicle. My festival at the room, the children who had been well trained by Mr. Joseph Kelly went through a number of maneuvers, which included Maypole and Morris Dancers. Now that was in 1890. So, you know, very early. Club day in the, the the opening of the pier, the pavilion. Last Monday, London was in fact in celebration of the time honored institution known as most people know what club days are. The clubs got the Titanic, the Foresters, uh, you know, all the friendly societies and had a, had a day out. Became club day. Anyway, thousands of visitors flocked into town to witness, to witness the opening of a new pier and pavilion proceeded by the little volunteer band by the Charlie Morris dancers who were ex executing a series of steps while they marched and waving their short flags, pleasing everyone, everyone with their agility. Oh, here we go. Club day is now a real day in the Lytham calendar and the year would not be complete without it. This is 1893. The feature of the procession was the Preston Royal Morris dancers whose performance was very, very entertaining and everybody seemed satisfied with them. It may be here mentioned that the full troop of dancers was not present as it numbered between 30 and 40. All the troop were dressed as Spanish bullfighters. Hmm. <laughs> Little Club Day, 1894. Little Club Day dates back to half a century. But <coughs> It is questionable whether during that period the annual festival ever reached the success attended last Monday. The firemen with their hose carriage came next, immediately behind them the Preston subscription band and the Preston juvenile Morris dancers. The girls were in white dresses with pale blue gaps, caps and the boys dark velvet trousers with red caps and rosettes to match. The dancing along the route was the object of general admin. Marius and I, I remember it was. Uh, we don't club day 1895. Oh, this is a, yeah, this is a good one. The charter of the celebration of the club anniversary at Lillian has never been more important than it was this year. The inhabitants held the event of the year with as much spirit, with much spirit and a feeling of great pleasure. The band of the Lillian volunteers were next followed by the Morris dancers from Much Hill near Preston in the picturesque attire, capering through the streets and actually time to the music. Well, that's the first time it, they were mentioned. <coughs> Much Hill. Later on in years, they, they were very, very, very busy. Let them black boat Saturday, 1895 to 1896. One of the happiest inspirations of these modern days has been the setting apart of special days for special, for specially adding certain characters or other purposes, purposes. <laughs> and none has been deserving in the respect that the Royal, than the Royal National Lifeboat Institute. Following the little volunteer band with the press and juvenile Morris dancers, trained by Mr. Spencer, again. Uh, Little Club Day 1896, the Charlie Adult Morris dancers danced in the procession and later accompanied by the little band adjourned to East Beach where dancing was indulged in. The little road in 1900. Ah, the procession has to be made as attractive as possible. Mr. James Brotherton is training a number of children of St. John's School to take part as Morris dancers. Now they, they went on for years, Mr. Brotherton's, uh, yes, about three volumes, I think. <laughs> this is it. Little Club Day 1900, following the band of the local volunteer corps with the Morris dancers, consisting this year of St. John's school children. They were 22 in number, boys and girls, and this was their first appearance, Mr. James Brotherton having trained them for the occasion, as they danced through the streets, they had a, a good following. Maudsley, now Maudsley, going back to 1894, little village out near, near Preston, near Leyland. <coughs> yeah. 
The above event took place on Saturday last, and despite the unfavorable weather, the festivities were much appreciated by those who participated therein. The processionists were led by the Loyal and Prize Band and a company of Morris dancers, all lads of the village, who had been trained by Mr. R. Clayton of Leyland. Yes, Mr. Clayton of Leyland was uh, a, a local gardener, I think, in, uh, in the bleach works in Leyland. He was also, I think, second in command of Leyland Morris dancers at one time. I think so. But he went off to train the, to train the dancers at Leyland. Uh, apparently, it had been mentioned by Mr. Sasser Sharp or uh, uh, Mark Carpelis that uh, Everyone knows that the, the dance from Leyland came from uh, from Mudsley, but that's not correct. It's the way around. <laughs> Ridington Tea Party in Galway, 1894, 1895. Held under favouring conditions, the party equaled in success the most prosperous of previous years. The Mudsley Morris dancers were also assigned this year <coughs> a place in the ranks. These lads did their part well, and like the band, earned themselves for themselves a high position in the popular favour. Gala Dead on Skirt, Trades Procession, 1894-1896. First gala was held last year, and though it was considered a great success, it was eclipsed by yesterday's gathering, headed by the band of the Arm Skirt companies of the third VP, JLR. <laughs> they were immediately followed by the Motley Morris dancers, led by Mr. R. Clayton, whose dancing all along the route was very pleasing and aggressive sad. Modsley Tea Party in Galway, 1896. The annual festival, which took, which is very popular in the village and district, took place on Saturday afternoon last. Modsley Morris dancers conducted by Mr. R. Rowley, new leader, were in the procession and formed one of the most attractive parts in it, the dancing all along the route being greatly admired. Ah, no, no, no. We're back to Wigan. Wigan St. John's Morris dancers, 1895. We are pleased to state that through the kindness of the Reverend W. Shapter, SS, and the headmaster, Mr. O'Glocklin, the Morris dancers from St. John's Boys School will take part in the procession on the light boat Saturday. These boys created quite a sensation in their dance through the town on the occasion of St. John's outdoor fete in Fancy Fair. First mentioned of St. John's Morris dancers in their Spanish bullfighting uniform. Wigan Lifeboat Saturday, 1895. The procession which was to be of exceptional interest to the people of Wigan was completely spoiled by the heavy rain on Saturday afternoon. The modern standards from St. John's naturally did not give their pretty display. It was no afternoon for lightly clad youngsters, though their absence was a source of disappointment to many people, but it was. The Southport, the Southport Lifeboat Demonstration, 1896. A large number of Wigan people were conveyed to Southport on Monday to witness the annual lifeboat demonstration. The principal centre of attraction being the Morris Dancers, about 40 in number from St. John's Schools, Wigan, under the charge of Mr. McLaughlin, headmaster, to whom great praise is due for the clever way in which the boys acquitted themselves throughout the entire route. Now then, the, uh, yeah, one of, one of the Catholic demonstrations that they have at, at Wigan, uh, I've been told that uh, even though the, the boys from St. John's were in the procession, they weren't, allowed, they weren't allowed to dance, they had to walk for some reason, some religious thing. Wigan in District Lifeboat Saturday, 1897. Also when the procession will be Morris dancers from Wigan St. John's Boys School. Wigan St. Patrick's Morris dancers will also take part. So here we've got St. Patrick's now. Wigan Tide Procession at Wigan, 1897. Charming weather prevailed on Whit Monday when the cuts remain procession of the Catholic mission in the Wigan were held. In the procession were St. Patrick's Fife and Drum Band and Morris dancers who were attired in green velvet jack jackets and black caps. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Sorry. We're going to just Saturday, 1889, 1998. 
1899. On beautiful weather before many thousands of people, the third demonstration in of the funds of the National Life Board was held on Saturday afternoon, following the old borough band in the procession, the St. John's Wigan Morris Dancers, the St. Patrick's Fife and Drum Band, followed by St. Patrick's Wigan Morris Dancers, the Standing Subscription Brass Band, and the Lower Range Morris Dancers. I oh, bet that were good. Right. Wigan Catholic Demonstration, 1990, 1900, sorry, which entire procession. Wigan St. Patrick's Fife and Drum Band, and Morris Dancers, plus the a brass band and Wigan St. John's Morris dancing in the procession. Local festivities in uh, 1897. Southport's rejoicing in honour of the Queen's Diamond Jubilee are being crowned with a success which could not have been surpassed. The Horwich Morris dancers were accompanied by the Horwich Prize Band, the Henley Green Girl, Girl, Girl and Dancers were headed by the Marshside. Temperance Band, while her de Mercy's musicians preceded the church band Morris Dancers, so they thought that was colourful as well. Southport died on the fair in Carnival Cossum. Who was it? <coughs> I'll have a little drink before I read that out. I try to. Sorry about the interruption. The fate started on Thursday afternoon when the various sets of Morris dancers footed it through the town. It was our own church down boys, sprinkling and gay, the Hindi green garland dancers, young girls in gay coloured skirts of different hues, white blouses crossed with coloured sashes and tiny coloured caps who wear big garlands of flowers as they gracefully danced along. And the horrid Morris dancers in purple velvet breeches, caps and yellow Waistbands, waist belts, whose bell adorned clogs made with my feet. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> <coughs> oh dear, pardon me. Whose, whose bell adorned clogs made rhythmic music like the clang of the wooden shoon as they went through their evolution. Sorry about that. <coughs> it's getting worse. That poor demonstration, that poor 1898. The annual demonstration on behalf of funds of the Life Board Institution took part under the most favourable conditions on Wednesday. The Church Star National School Morris Dancers and the leader, Mr. T. Vine, T. T. Vine, deserves a word of compliment for the excellent manner in which they turned out and the clever fashion in which they performed their allotted part. On this occasion, only the boys took part in the dancing. The music was supplied by the High Park Temperance Band. Yes, started off a long time ago then. Fleetwood Town's meeting discusses ways of celebrating 1897. So we're back to 1897. A large attending meeting of red payers of Fleetwood was held in the Queen's Hall on Friday night to consider the best means of commemorating the Diamond Jubilee of the Queen. Morris dancers were practicing in view of such an event. Diamond Jubilee, a great day at Fleetwood, 1897. Favoured by ideal Queen's weather. <coughs> the Diamond Jubilee was celebrated at Fleetwood with great enthusiasm. The Morris dancers, maple, skirt and tambourine dancers were especially delightful features of the day. Their proceedings and Mr. Fox, who trained them, must have been felt, must have felt satisfied by the Appreciation showing by the crowd. Hmm. Mr. Fox from Horwich. Thornton Club Day, 1899. Thornton near Fleetwood held its annual club day on Wednesday with favourable splendid weather. The Thornton band supplied the music throughout the day, and a new <coughs> <coughs> when a new feature in the procession was the Morris dancers from Fleetwood. Club Day. Following the 3rd Loyal North Lancashire Regiment band were the Morris dancers from Fleetwood. These were naturally one of the chief attractions of the procession. Garland Regatta at St. Anne's, 1898 and 1900. <coughs> Pardon me. For want of a better name, the occasion was called the Gala Day 
and it was indeed a gala gay carnival. Hmm. The Fleetwood brass band and the modest dancers came mixed with their white shirts, velvet knickers, and blue sashes. Modest dancers are supposed to be played out, <laughs> but at some dance, the Fleetwood troupe were at a great reception, and their inclusion in the program was cordially approved. Club Dead Poulton, 1899 to 1900. Fort me file, that is. Wednesday was Club Dead Poulton, and naturally, this busy township of the file of the file was all the stir. Following the Blackpool Blackboard Brass Band came the Fleetwood Morris dancers. These thin costumes were very soon wet when the rain that fell while the procession marked round. Following the Blackpool Blackboard Brass Band came the Fleetwood Morris dancers, whose thin costumes were very soon wet when the rain that fell while the procession marked round. Sorry about that. Great demonstration at Fleetwood in 1900, the Queen's birthday. Following the Thornton ban in the procession were the Fleetwood Morris dancers. Lower Inns, we're going down Lower Inns now, 1898. Lower Inns are near Wigan. On Saturday afternoon, Lower Inns was the scene of a charming spectacle when the Rose Queen Festival took place. A word of praise is due for the excellent manner in which the Maypole and Morris dancers went through their part of the proceedings. They were all lower end boys and girls, <coughs> and their performances reflect great credit <coughs> on Mr. John Meadows of Henley Green, who had been responsible for their training. They were in Morris Dancers, 1899. These young people were invited to take part in the lifeboat demonstration at Southport. The dancers were under the conductorship of Mr. John Meadows, Meadows and Mr. Richard Holm, to whom too much praise cannot be given with a very careful training of the children. May Queen Festival at Worsley Mangs, that's near Wigan, <laughs> 1899, 1900. Following the band came the Worsley Mangs, Morris dancers in costumes of royal blue velvet, woven at the Goldburn Mills. Ooh. The dancers were instructed by Mr. Taylor of Hingley and that the children had profited by the tuition bestowed was to be seen by the graceful evol evolutions for which they were responsible. I think that's what it said. Trade demonstration at Nelson. Nelson. Ah. Not since Charter Day nine years ago has there been such a scene of animation and bustle at Nelson as was the case on Saturday, following the bank hall Reed Band Burnley with a modest entrance from Cone. The Morris dancers from Colony decided they would uh, they would have a Morris team after watching Preston Morris. I think Pretoria celebrated Colon relief of Mafeking. Included in the procession were two bands and the Colon Morris dancers. June nineteen hundred. Saint Andrew got and Gala eighteen ninety nine. Oh, in the procession where they lost the near Bolton Industrial School band and Morris dancers. Throughout the afternoon and evening, the industrial school band and Morris dancers, kept performances and collections were taken on behalf of the boys, which amounted to three pound nineteen shillings and two p. <coughs> now these dancers, and they said they have lasted a long time as well. They're, they're I think one or two volumes. <laughs> Ainsdale and no doubt. Undoubtedly, one of, one of the most popular features in the procession were the Morris dancers from the Ainsdale Catholic School and the Birkdale Farm School, <coughs> 50 in number, all of whom were <coughs> all of whom wore stocking, stocking caps and suitable clothes, hung with bells, and carried in their hands the customary short ones, decorated with ribbons and bells. The dancers were led by Peter Rigby. Immediately behind the Morris dancers marched the Burke Hill Farm School Band, to whose strains of Cocker the North the dancing was accompanied. Those dancers went on for a long time as well. Fancy dress press, ah, uh, here we go. Fancy dress cycle parade at Lancaster. The Morris cyclists, who always made a valiant show on these occasions, had gone one better than any other club by introducing a new feature in the shape of 
a band of juvenile Morris dancers. These little folk have been trained <coughs> by Mr. W. Clark, captain of the club, and they're really pretty sure they made. They were dressed in patriotic colours and were loudly applauded along the route. Now, remember, Preston Morris dancers had danced in the, the sacred parade for the royal visit. And once again, you see, let's have our own Morris team. Why do we have these foreigners from Preston? And it, it, of course, the, uh, the, the, the Morris Morris dancers became the, the Lancaster Morris Prize Morris dancers because they danced all over the place. Yes, they did. Very religious as well. <laughs> there we go. That's it. I hope you understood it. <laughs> well done, Johnny. Oh. We've got about 10 minutes left. Wow. So yeah, have a little drink and Michael look through the questions. Oh, and dear. pick out some questions I'm for sorry. you. I'm sorry about the reading, it was rubbish. <laughs> Come on. Well, you've, you've got a bit of a chest infection, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, but there aren't any questions in chat. No questions, I can't no. believe that at all. Everyone was, everyone was so enthralled. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope I got, you know, it's very difficult to do 10 years. You know, through it's only a, that's only a fraction of what's in the actual book, as you know. Because most of these have very, I've got a copy, haven't you? Does, any, oh, does anybody w uh, would like to ask a question? Um, if you put your hands up in reactions or just um, unmute yourself and ask a question. Well, the thing is, you can see, well, most of these teams are in the area starting off through Leland. You know, we had Leland going to Chorley. We had Chorley going to Harwich. We had Leland and Chorley going to Preston. We had four Preston teams. We had Preston going to Lancaster and Cone. You know, we had Harwich going to uh, Hindley Green. And it, it just spread out like that. So I, I don't think there was any thing as a, a, a tradition. It's just that these people kept pinching each other's dances. Uh, there's in Wahlbergs. In the St. Ignatius, the junior teams in Preston, I actually met a few of the old dancers and I said, How'd it go? And they went, Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, all right, how'd it go? Did it, did it, did it, did it. And they all did the old little inside and line. Did it, did it. So, you know, to be quite honest, I think most of them just changed the dances a little bit, but. Uh, but the, the Spanish bullfighting thing, I think that's, uh, I like that, yeah. Yes, I like that. <coughs> anyway, it took longer than what I thought. I might have a coffee more, wouldn't I? Yeah, so it, uh, oh. I've got um, Diana Bradley, you've unmuted yourself. Ah, Diana, Do you want to yeah. ask a question? Hello, Diana. Hello, yes, I wasn't aware I was asking the question. No, oh. I, I was going to, you know, yeah, I must have pressed a button or some oh. sort of thing. But I mean, I've been quite curious about the Horwich history because I thought 1893, so it's interesting to see it's 1892. And, uh, you know, and, and, and also we were sort of talked about hospital days, but it's interesting to see that they travelled all over the area, really. Oh, um, yes, it's a There wasn't a procession until a certain time because we sort of always thought they'd done processions right from the beginning. So it's tidied up a few few things that we didn't know about, actually. So it's quite, quite yeah. interesting, really, yeah. Well, as I said before, Diana, this is not me speaking. This is the newspaper, so yeah, yeah. Yes, I'm not, yeah. not putting my stamp on it because it's uh, I've got in trouble by doing that in, in the past. <laughs> well, yeah, I think it's quite interesting that some, some of the myths that are about, you know, are, you know, shown to be myths when you actually see what the newspaper articles have, have put yeah. in. You know, times and things. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the one about one about the clogs. You know, the, the, the junior team. Who uh, there's a photograph. I forgot which the, one of the dancers with his boots on, and I think yeah, they were the, yeah. the juvenile Morris dancers who decided to emulate the man and throw the clogs away. And the shoes away, their boots and more more yeah, yeah. clogs. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Well, boots were Sunday best, you see. So we had understood that quite often that's why Leyland didn't wear clogs. Uh, well, but it was, you know, and that Horwich was one of the more unusual ones to wear clogs. Yes, well, to be quite honest, yeah. I think Horwich had something to do with uh, with Oldham and they wore clogs. You know, they had one or two little bits with, with Oldham, didn't they? So, yeah. 
yeah. they might have got there throwing their throwing their wands away and using ropes from from all them they might have done i don't know yeah and we were curious about the colors of the costume because it looks like it's the young boys that had the red velvet breeches like we have uh, whereas the other team was blue but then we uh, came across somebody where we got our original medal from um called uh, tom finley he had the, the original medal and his father he said he'd had a suit made for him when he was four uh, by his father's Morris costume, and it was green. So we wonder oh, whether they were colour blind or whether they'd used the drill on well, uh, uh, for they making the uh, the covers on the railway things. Because I course, think they used the colours that they could find. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. Roger Edwards has got a, an actual an actual uniform of Harry Morris. Yeah, and it's purple. I think it's purple. Yeah, but, well, they mentioned purple, didn't they? Again, you see. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah, yeah. So no, he hasn't. He hasn't. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah. yeah, we saw one, but that that was it. We never had it. Right. Oh, yeah. I just can I just say now, Johnny, it's a it's magnificent not. piece of work. Oh, thank you. Congratulations to you. It really, really is. It's it's built on a lot of well, uh, early work, I'm, and I really I'm sorry I couldn't project, you know, project it the way I should have done, you know. But uh, uh, right, right. Well, then when you go through thirty years of. Uh, of research, it's it's easier now because it, you can sit in front of your computer and uh, <coughs> and press a button and it all comes up. Uh, Derek, have, oh sorry, Derek Schofield's got a question. Ah, uh, Derek. Hello, Johnny. Thank you very Hi. much. Oh, uh, yes, I, I can, uh, uh, and hello, Prue as well. I can uh, agree with Prue about the books. Uh, I have all three and eagerly awaiting number four. Um, <laughs> Uh, as for Spanish bullfighters' uh, costumes, uh, I can honestly say that I've seen worse uh, or just as bizarre amongst Morris teams up and down the country. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I think it became the Moorish because of the Moorish connection. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, there was a there was an, I should have put it in. There was an article in, in volume one about uh, in the Charlie Guardian about the origin of Morris about the, the, the Moorish connection. Mm -hmm. Whether Harry Gent read that or not, I don't know. But uh... it's it it certainly shows, or you've certainly showed today uh, about how you know it, it it starts in one place and then somebody else thinks yeah. a, a Rose Queen festival would be a great idea. Uh, yeah. it, I wondered about the the Rose Queen. Uh, you know, it, things started off with May Day, and then of course, ah. if, everybody, if everybody had their events on May Day or the Saturday closest to May Day. They'd all be on the same at the same time. So yeah. Rose Queen festivals gave the opportunity of spreading it yeah. out over a longer period of time. Well, they, they started up because of the, the inclement weather, really, with the bands of hope and what have you. May Day was always pissing down or snowing or something, so yeah. they moved them. Well, of and course, it, it never rains on the May Day. It never rains in June or July, of course. Of um, course it doesn't. <laughs> but, it, but it also showed just... How, you know that this was, although it was a, a looking back to some something old, something in inverted commas traditional. It was most definitely popular culture. Yeah. It, was, it was very popular at that particular time. Um, just fill me in. All these various teams that you mentioned, how long did they last up until 1914, or did many of them stop before that date? Oh, let's a lot of them stop before that day. Yes. Yeah. So um, it wasn't a, it wasn't simply a case of the war came and all no. the teams stopped and they all no, a, a, a few teams, right? Like, just sorry, it, it just emphasised <coughs> the popular culture aspect of it, of it starting, lasting a few years, and then stopping again. Yeah. The 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 interesting thing was that it lasted up until the First World War, and then uh, uh, after the First World War, a lot of people wanted it back, but there weren't sufficient number of men. So they graduated to boys, and when there weren't enough uh, boys, they graduated to girls. And that's where a lot of the teams like Adlington um, and so on came in, because they, they were taught by men, that the remaining men, and then it gradually uh, went into, into the girls' teams. So it was a progression, really. Well, I, w I wouldn't disagree with uh, with what you're saying, Prue, but you know, I did. I've just asked Johnny whether they these t all these teams lasted until 1914, and he said not Indeed. in all cases. Yeah, 
so, the well, when you look at teams like Leyland, who, who lost some of the who lost some of the dancers, by the way, in 1914, and and, and the coconut dancers, they uh, they lost uh, 80 percent of their dancers, I think, in the First World War. Would you believe? So it, uh, but they obviously they got together again after after the war. But there, there was quite a few that it seems they just carried on dancing, didn't really alter. You know the rose festivals, the light boat processions, or whatever. They just carried on through the war, even though <coughs> even though there's all this hardship going on, they still carried on. Quite a few of them. I think if you read the, I don't know which volume it is, but it, it's all. Well, that'll there. be volume two. That'll be your next talk, Johnny. Oh, uh, I hope I feel better. I'm sorry about the mistakes and the messing about. <coughs> anyway. Well, it's I, all there. I collect, want I'm to... just saying to Johnny, I collected a dance for Rivington that was written in 1926, and the lady I spoke to had been dancing from about 1718 for the St. Helens Bells and started and whatever. But she started a lot of Morris teams, and I think it seemed to be something that they did for events, and sometimes they were one-offs or a couple That's of right, they were. And th So That's... they came and went. It wasn't really mm. sort of something like we think of with great longevity. They were very much you know, needed for an occasion so that they would be done. And I think there was a lot of that. You can see that through the extracts that you published as well, can't you? That a lot of school teams and church teams would start up as something to do for an event and then they may well disappear, you know. So uh, well, yeah, yeah. when you look at when you look at the, the, the Lancaster Morris prize Morris dancers, they carried on for a long time. You know, they they uh, I think I've done up to 1929, I think, and uh, they were still dancing. Mm -hmm. but, and they were very religious. Of course, I don't know why you've seen that photograph of mm -hmm. the banners they had, you know. Obey your parents. Mm -hmm. Honor the king. Fear God. And they used to carry these banners around when they were dancing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. There's quite a few religious teams, especially the, 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 the Band of Hope, which lasted only a few years and sometimes just one off. Yeah, if you read the band of folks, and they were the ones that actually changed the, changed the uh, the May Queens to the Rose Queens, I think. Yes, I, I appreciate him having to do it. When Pauline uh, asked me to do it, I thought, no, I can't do that. I don't. I could dance anywhere, but public speaking. Yeah, I mean, when I was with the Morris, I used to get the. The politicians or the school teachers to do all the talking it was easier. So. Well, thank you very much, Johnny. Well done. And oh, uh, can we all unmute ourselves and give Johnny a round of applause, please? Ah, thank you very much.